main event. Here is my Korean. It is printed in English and Arabic, so it's a completely legit official Korean. I have bookmarked several passages, and um, the passages I've bookmarked, I've bookmarked with bacon, because raw bacon makes the best Quranic bookmark. I'm just going to go through these in order from front to back and read them off, and then um, once I've read them off, I will tear the page out of the Quran, put it in my fire bowl, and ignite it here. First one, you might want to jot these down. Uh, Surah 2, verse 191. And fight the infidels wherever you find them, and expel them from the place they had turned you out from. Evil, evil garbage. And it goes, and up in flames. Go back to hell where you came from. And I'll discard my bacon bookmark here. Next up, uh, Surah 2, verse 193. Fight them till idolatry comes to an end and the law of Allah prevails. Evil. Pulling that out. Garbage. On fire. Burn, big burn. Next up, pull my bacon bookmark out. Oh, the smell is divine, by the way. All right, we are in Surah 4, verse 24. Also forbidden are married women, unless they are captives of war. Such is the decree of Allah. What this is talking about is who a man can or cannot have sex with. So what this is doing is it is ratifying the rape of women captured in jihad. Let me read it again. This is... Surah 4, 24. Also forbidden are married women unless they are captives of war. Such is the decree of Allah. Well, Allah is an evil son of a bitch, so he can go to hell. Uh, next up is also within 4, 24. Then give those of these women you have enjoyed the agreed dower. It will not be sinful if you agree to something else by mutual consent after having settled the dowry. Allah is certainly all-knowing and all-wise. What this verse is doing is it's ratifying prostitution. If a man pays a woman a dower or a dowry, a certain quantity of money, he can have sex with her without obligation. And certainly Allah is all-knowing and all-wise because Allah is an evil son of a bitch. All right, next, on to Surah 434. This is talking to a man who um, one of his many wives will not have sex with him willingly. Uh, this is 434. As for women you feel are averse, talk to them persuasively. Then leave them alone in bed without molesting them. Then beat them and go to bed, when the, go to bed with them when they are willing. So this ratifies beating your wife if she won't have sex with you. Evil, evil, evil. We'll burn this because that has no place in a civilized society. Next up, let's go to uh, this is Surah 533. The punishment for those who wage war against Allah and His Prophet, who is Muhammad, and perpetrate disorders in the land is to kill or crucify them and have a hand on one side and a foot on the other cut off evil. Burn, burn, burn. Okay, pull my bookmark out. Next up, we're in Surah 8. This is 812. And Allah said to the angels, I am with you. Go and strengthen the faithful. I shall fill the hearts of infidels with terror. So smite them on their necks and every joint and incapacitate them. This is the call to beheading the infidels. This is where that all comes from. And it's evil. So we will burn that. Where 
where he came from. And let's see what do we have here next. We have uh, Surah 9. Surah 9 verse 5. This is the big one. But when these months prohibited for fighting are over, slay the idolaters wherever you find them, and take them captive or besiege them, and lie in wait for them at every likely place. Next up, still in wonderful Surah 9, verse 29. Fight those people of the book who do not believe. By the way, Judeo-Christians, that's us, people of the book. Fight those people of the book who do not believe in Allah and the last day. Do not prohibit what Allah and his apostle have forbidden, nor accept divine law until all of them pay the jizya tax in submission. Evil. Not paying no freaking tax. Burn, burn, burn. Next up, still in good old Surah 9, verse 80. Whether you plead forgiveness for them or not, Allah will not forgive them, even though you plead 70 times, for they disbelieved in Allah and his apostle, and Allah does not show transgressors the way. Evil. Still in Surah 9, verse 123. O believers, murder the unbelievers around you, and let them find harshness in you. Really. Yeah, go to hell. There you go. Now we are in Surah 13, verse 42. Surely those who had gone before them did deceive, but Allah is all-deceiving, for he has knowledge of what each does. This is calling God a deceiver and a liar, which implies that really Allah's true identity is Satan. And I think we can all agree to that. Go back to hell, Allah, from whence ye came. Next up, Surah 23, verse 1. The true believers will be successful who are humble in their service, who shun all frivolities, who strive for, better, for betterment, who guard their sex except from their wives and women slaves of old. This ratifies um, concubines, concubinage. Evil. We'll burn that. There we go. Next up, Sarah 47, verse 4. So when you clash with the unbelievers, smite their necks until you overpower them, then hold them in bondage. Yeah, I'd like to see you try. Next up, Surah 52, verse 24. Um, this goes to man-boy sex, which is highly prized in Islam. Um, this is again 52:24. And young boys, like pearls within their shells, will go around. Uh, there's all kinds of verses about this. It's, it's twisted. And I'll be writing an essay on homosexuality and homosexual pedophilia and heterosexual pedophilia within Islam very, very shortly. 
because it's, it's a cultural norm. Next up is Surah 56, verse 17. Again, boys of never-ending bloom will pass round to them cups and decanters. Never-ending bloom means never-ending pubescence. And that's what the Muslim man is taught to find sexually attractive, is prepubescent and pubescent boys. It's truly, truly disgusting. Most men, or most boys in Islamic culture do not escape their childhood without being anally and orally raped by men. And then they, in turn, perpetuate the cycle of sexual abuse. And most men in, in Islamic cultures are homosexual slash homosexual pedophiles. Now to Surah 65, divorce, 65-4. As for your women who have lost hope of menstruation, and in case you have doubt, the prescribed period of waiting for them is three months, as also for those who have not menstruated yet. What this is doing is ratifying sex with prepubescent girls. Let me read it again. As for your women who have lost hope of menstruation, that would be older women, and in case you have a doubt, the prescribed period of waiting for them is three months as also for those who have not menstruated yet. So this is ratifying sex with girls who are, you know, under 12, 13 years old, which is evil. There is no other word for that. It's evil. So we'll burn that. And then finally, last citation here is Surah 76. Uh, verse 19, and boys of everlasting youth will go about attending them. Looking at them, you would think that they were pearls dispersed. Again, young boys as sex objects. Disgusting. Filthy, evil, satanic, disgusting. The whole thing, front to back. I just picked out a few. Every single page has something like that. There's either ratification of rape, ratification of sex with boys, or violence, 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 kill, maim, behead, show no mercy, blah, blah, blah. This is evil. Evil, evil garbage. And it will be a cold day in hell before I bow down to this crap. I would encourage all of you out there watching who share my feelings, to do something similar. Because we have to make a stand right here and right now. We can't wait around 20 years. We can't wait a generation for our kids to fight this war for us. This war is on us right here and right now. Either we make our stand right here, or it's over. Burn a Koran. Put it on YouTube. Show the world that we are not going to back down. Backing down is not what Christianity is about. There's a reason why the church on earth is called the church militant. Okay? You can come after me if you want, boys. You come after me. That's fine. I have no problem laying down my life for my fellow Americans, for my fellow human beings, and for the church. I have no problem with that. Come and get it. But I'm not going to lay down. That is not what Christ commands. There are times when we have to fight. We fight evil. We fight the evil in the world, and this crap is evil. My name is Ann Barnhart. I'm at 9175 Cornbrust Circle, 80124 in Lone Tree, Colorado. Anybody who wants a piece of me is more than welcome to come and get it. That goes for Lindsey Graham, anyone in the government who thinks that this is a crime, or um, any Muslims who would like to come and get a piece of me. I've had enough of this crap. I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to submit to Islam ever, ever.